Hey guys, this is Nick, and today we're going to take a look at Pop! OS 21.04, or 21.06, because it's releasing in June and 21.04 doesn't make sense, right? Anyways, the team at System76 has been hard at work on their own distribution called Pop! OS, and while it's been a while since they've been working on it, 21.04 is the first release where I think the changes from baseline Ubuntu really warrant a dedicated video. So we're going to take a look at all the new stuff in 21.04, but also at the older things that I have never had the chance of looking at because this is my first time using Pop! OS at all. So we're going to take a look at all of that and especially at their new GNOME implementation called Cosmic. And speaking of Cosmic, it would be a cosmic mistake not to check out today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Safing. They are an open source company that develops the Portmaster, an all-in-one network monitoring solution. It allows you to watch everything that comes in or out of your network and then block or allow the stuff you want to take action on globally or on a per app basis. Portmaster is free as in free beer and completely open source. And it also has advanced features like filter lists to automatically block ads, trackers or malware, and it can enforce secure DNS over TLS for your whole computer. All these features are easy to access thanks to a simple and legible user interface and you can download it as a deb or an arch package. It's also available on Windows if you need it there as well. Safing Sportmaster is still in alpha and looking for users and input. The team is super responsive and you can contact them by mail, on Reddit or directly on GitHub. Follow the link in the description to download Portmaster and give the team your thoughts. Okay, so the first contact you get with Pop! OS is also the first departure from Ubuntu. They don't use the Ubiquity installer, they use the installer created by the guys at Elementary OS. Actually, Pop! OS has been using that new installer even before Elementary OS used it themselves. Though at that point, I think I'm gonna have to have kids just to ensure that somebody's there to review Elementary OS 6 when it releases. Still, that installer looks miles better than what Ubuntu offers. And while it doesn't handle partitioning itself, it still has the ability to encrypt a drive and a few installation options. It's just a lot more user-friendly than any other installer I've ever used on a Linux distro, and it brings Pop! OS's nerdy, space-inspired graphics and look and feel with it, which I have to say I really, really like. The installer opts for a first-run setup, which means that user account creation is handled after the install is complete, which makes sense for somebody who sells Linux pre-installed systems. So that first run wizard looks like the one GNOME ships out of the box with the keyboard layout, time zone, location services, online accounts and user creation. Once that's done, you get to the desktop and that's where System76 made the most of the changes. 21.04 is the first release where they actually named their GNOME implementation. Its layout is quite interesting and it's called Cosmic. Now at this point, with all those space-inspired references, I'm really surprised that they didn't offer to sponsor Blaine from Infinitely Galactic. Now also check his channel out, he's a handsome devil and he's making some really smooth and chill videos about Linux and open source. Ok, back to Cosmic. First, you don't get a unified activities view. Instead, you have two buttons, one for workspaces and one for applications. The workspaces view displays your open windows and your workspaces on the left. It's basically what the activities view is in GNOME, except you have the workspaces on the left and it makes it easier to just slide your mouse down from the workspaces button into the list. You'll be able to change that behavior in the settings to put the workspace list on any other screen edge if you prefer. The applications button shows the applications grid with all the latest GNOME goodies like folder creation and renaming or reordering the applications in the grid. Cosmic also adds a permanent dock on the bottom of the screen. Its default configuration is not great. It doesn't auto-hide when a window is maximized and it extends all the way to the screen edges, which doesn't really serve a purpose. You can change both of these behaviors in the settings with plenty of other options, like the size, the position, or the ability to hide some of the default launchers. Speaking of these, the dock lets you access the workspaces and the application's grid, but also the new launcher, which we'll talk about in just a few seconds after I'll tell you why that dock just doesn't do it for me. While it serves as a launcher for apps and for task management, you can't minimize an app by clicking on its icon. Now, this is a major oversight in my opinion. Aiming for a small minimize button in the title bar is way harder than just flicking the mouse pointer to an icon down in the bottom of your screen. And this is a feature that I hope gets implemented in the future. 
Now you might think I harbor some ill feelings about this dog, but I just feel like they caved in to peer pressure without really thinking it through. The rest of the layout is standard GNOME, with the date and time in the middle of the top panel and the indicators to the right. Now, about that new launcher. This is a new addition to Pop OS 21.04 as well. It can be summoned by clicking its dock icon or by pressing the super key. Although, once again, that behavior can be changed. The launcher is a bit lackluster at the moment. It only lets you search for applications or open windows and do calculations if you press the equal symbol first. It's supposed to let you execute commands, but I couldn't get it to run xkill or top or any other command I tried. The problem is that in GNOME, system-wide search is handled through the activities view. Here, that search only appears in the applications view and it doesn't search through the system either unless you manually re-enable these search options in the settings. But enabling all these search providers doesn't do anything for the launcher, which doesn't seem to take advantage of them. So basically, Pop OS 21.04 has made search worse in Cosmic than it is in default GNOME, which is a bit disappointing. Like pressing the super key in GNOME lets you search through everything. Here pressing the super key brings up a launcher, which isn't better than a full screen view, it's not worse, it's just an equivalent, but it doesn't look through all the same stuff. So the default behavior is worse, which is disappointing, especially that if you wanted to make a launcher, you have uLauncher, which already does all of that and is miles ahead. Now in general, that cosmic layout doesn't bring anything new or really useful. It looks like great ideas on paper and the user research is sane on this, but the dock isn't fully fleshed out, the launcher is less functional than the default GNOME search, and separating the workspaces and the applications view only makes things more legible for complete beginners and newcomers to GNOME. People that are used to it will probably prefer the older way. Now, Pop OS already had some existing features that weren't introduced with 21.04, but that I had never tried before. And the most important one is the auto tiling. And oh, I'm so looking forward to all the comments telling me that the i3 window manager already does all of these features and that I should really use it. In the top panel, you get an icon that lets you turn tiling mode on. It's off by default and can also be toggled using super plus Y. And the icon reflects the mode you're currently in. In tiling mode, the first window you open will be in full screen, and each subsequent window will use half the space occupied by the currently focused window. This means that your screen real estate is always used to the maximum, and that you rarely have to resize windows or move them around. Once multiple windows are tiled, you can still change their proportions and all windows will resize accordingly. For keyboard users, using the super key and the arrow keys lets you move the focus from window to window as well. You can even organize all your floating windows automatically using this. If you already have windows opened in floating mode, pressing super plus Y will auto-tile everything. Now it's a really powerful experience and it basically brings a full tiling window manager inside of a more classical, easier to use desktop environment. It serves mouse users and keyboard users and it's a great thing. Oh, and also you can add system-wide exceptions to make sure that some windows can always float. Damn. Now I like this tiling feature, even though I'm not a big fan of pure tiling window managers. And I can see some use cases where I'd prefer using that over floating windows. Now let's talk about the look and feel of Pop OS. But first, my analytics tell me that only 112% of you are subscribed, so... Ow! Fuck. Okay, sorry about that, I won't do it again. So, the look and feel hasn't really changed in 21.04. It's still their own theme, dark by default, with cyan and orange highlights and their own icon theme. It looks good in my opinion, especially combined with the custom Fira font they use. It looks modern, a bit flashy and quirky, but it stays legible and the dark mode isn't pure black, which is easier on my eyes. They also offer a way to use a light theme instead, but I find the cyan contrast on white a bit too aggressive. Various controls like buttons, sliders, switches or combo boxes look nice, with soft highlights and good pressed states. They look a bit tactile, I like it. Now generally, Pop OS looks modern and that hasn't changed in 21.04, it's a nice looking distro. In terms of default applications, Pop OS has the standard GNOME ones with Geary pre-installed for mail, Firefox for web browsing and LibreOffice as well. They did replace the GNOME software app by the Pop Shop, which is basically the elementary OS app center but tweaked a little bit. 
It has an additional settings button that lets you enable or disable the various repos for Ubuntu, select some update sources or add additional ones, or even disable the ones that PopOS added themselves for their own apps and themes. But you can also manage Flatpak remotes. Now it's interesting to note that PopOS, while based on Ubuntu, has removed Snap support and they don't offer a graphical way to enable or disable it. Apart from this change, the Pop Shop is virtually just the App Center, and as the App Center on Elementor iOS, it's a bit behind on the kind of information it shows you compared to GNOME software. You don't have the privacy labels, the age restrictions, and stuff like that, and updates notes only show you the latest update. Still, the addition of a software source manager is appreciable, and I would really like Elementor iOS to take a hint on that and add that as well on their own version of the App Center. Okay, time to wrap up this video and PopOS as a distribution taken as a whole is really good. It looks good, it's modern, and it builds some nice feature on top of the Ubuntu advantages, which are well-stocked repos, stability, Nvidia drivers out of the box, although PopOS ships a separated ISO for that. Basically, it improves on the base that it uses, which is nice. But as a new release 21.04 leaves me unsatisfied. The cosmic desktop is just not there yet and it doesn't feel like a complete vision yet. It, on paper, like I said, it, it looks like it's good idea separating the applications and the workspaces, probably makes it easier for people just being introduced to GNOME and Linux to understand how that works. The dock in itself is a good idea, the launcher in itself might be a good idea. The problem is that the launcher gives a worse search experience than what default GNOME offers, the dock uses all the bottom edge for no reason and doesn't allow you to minimize windows, which isn't great, and separating the applications and the workspaces doesn't really add any specific value. You still have to put your mouse pointer up and click on one of these to display something. It's, it doesn't add anything new, and on paper it's good ideas, but the execution doesn't seem all that useful. Some people will like it, and I'd probably take some flack for that, but Honestly, I like PopOS, I just think that Cosmic is, for now at least, unnecessary. In the future, it's probably going to be a lot better, because they will probably fix all those little niggles and annoyances. But in 21.04, I feel that it's a vision that is not realized yet. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't stay to like or dislike if you didn't. You can also subscribe and turn on notifications to get more videos like this one. And you can also go watch all my videos on Odyssey if you don't really like YouTube. Now, as you might have noticed, my shirt still isn't closed, so I was still not able to hire someone to do it for me. So if you want to help with that, you can join my Patreon subscribers and my YouTube members, and you'll get access to my weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!